Hello, dear abdominal folks. I am so glad to be with you here today. I'm Isabel Spradlin of abdominaladhesiontreatment.com, and we are continuing, at long last, our series on abdominal uh, adhesions in daily life. So this is a segment in that series. But this is something that I very often recommend that people do, especially for those who are a little more prone to bowel obstructions. The other time that it can be super useful to use this technique, even outside of the context of a bowel obstruction. So this technique can really work even if you're not prone to bowel obstructions and you're just having discomfort or pain in your belly and it tends to flare at times and you tend to have these moments of, oh my gosh, is this gonna be a flare? So it doesn't have to be a bowel obstruction flare, it can just be a pain flare, it can be a flare of discomfort or whatever other symptoms that you experience. Um, the minute that you start having that question, is, oh my gosh, could this be it? That is the moment to start using this technique. Um, so if you have an inflammatory condition inside the gut, like Crohn's or IBS, oftentimes this is not a great thing to do during one of those kinds of flares. But if you are prone to bowel obstructions and you are wondering how to start getting ahead of them so that you don't end up in the ER, so that they don't take such a toll on you, and so that ideally you can start to get a hold on them before they get a hold on you, um, then this is a really great, very simple technique to help you start to do that. Very quickly, when bowel obstructions um, start, it can be for various reasons. Some people are very sensitive to certain foods and the inflammation that that food, eating that food causes can slow down the processing of the gut resulting in a bowel obstruction. So that's one way that that happens. Another way that bowel obstructions can happen is that the adhesions, um, whether it's sort of that spider webby type adhesion that's pulling on an intestinal loop and maybe kinking it a little bit, or just disallowing the material, the food, to pass through as easily as it could otherwise, that's another way that bowel obstructions can come about. So what I'm about to show you works no matter what is causing the bowel obstructions or the potential bowel obstruction, uh, but I just wanted to say that really quickly. Now, one of the things that I need to say about this technique, this very simple technique, is that you do want to be able to use this before you ramp into the full pain or debilitation of a bowel obstruction. So once you're in that extreme pain state, or for some people it's not extreme pain, it's actually more just like a very deep discomfort um, that you can't seem to get away from. Once you're into the deepest part of the symptoms and the experience of the bowel obstruction, this technique probably won't help. Um, I don't think that it would make anything worse. I haven't seen it ever make anything worse, but it, this is not a panacea. It doesn't work once you're into the bowel obstruction usually. So in order for this to work as well as possible, you want to be very aware of what's happening in your body and pay attention to those very first initial signs that something is not quite right. If you are somebody who has been to the ER often multiple times for a bowel obstruction, or if you've experienced, even if it hasn't taken you to the ER, if you've experienced the symptoms of a bowel obstruction often enough, uh, you generally have some sort of indication of when it's starting. Now, that indication might not be a super clean Ooh, bowel obstruction starting, ding, ding, ding. It might not be that clear, right? Oftentimes it's a question. It's a wondering like, oh, is this a bowel obstruction starting? Oh my gosh. And then sort of that fear thing starts to kick in naturally. You don't have to fight that off. But that moment when you start to wonder to yourself, oh my gosh, is this the start of a bowel obstruction or is this the start of a flare? This, that is the moment to start using this technique. What is the technique? <laughs> so I already said, of course, that it's very simple and it is. If you have been using any of um, 
the videos or techniques or just following along with this blog long enough, you know that I um, am a huge proponent of semi-regular, at, at least, semi-regular work on your own belly. Not just because it can help, but because it gives you information about how your belly feels at various times throughout your week or throughout your month or even throughout your day if you're doing it more often, uh, multiple times per day. So hopefully you're already addressing your belly with your hands at least occasionally, right? So having that information, having that already set up in your life is going to help you with this technique. Many people who come and talk to me about bowel obstructions, they, they feel like, oh, the obstruction is always right here under my left rib, or it's always down in this row, or starts down in this right low abdominal area. Most of us have a sense of where this stuff tends to start. But sometimes it's really random. Sometimes you'll be going about your day and suddenly something kind of like in the middle on, towards the right is starting to give you troubles and you've never had troubles there before. And of course, this can trigger some fears, some questions. That's okay. But it helps to know also your body's patterns. So even if you have this random thing crop up in a new area, but you also know that once things start to build, it tends to show up in this other spot that you are, are already aware of, that's good information to have. So we're gonna address this two ways. The first way we're gonna address it is wherever you feel the pain or the discomfort or the thing that's starting to build, that's where the engagement of your hand goes. So even if you're at work in a meeting or maybe you're um, jogging, or exercising, or maybe you're just sitting at your computer and you start to feel this discomfort. Number one rule is just put your hand there and gently sink in. Again, as with everything I teach, we're never shoving our way in, we're never pushing in, we're engaging and letting the fingers sink in. The second part to this technique is that you start to move. So if you're sitting in a meeting at work and you can't get up and walk around the room, that's understandable, you need to be in that meeting. So movement can be just a gentle contraction and release of the abdomen. Contracting, hardening the muscle, releasing the muscle. Maintaining the sinking in, maintaining the um, application of your hand at this area. You can do a little rubbing, but you want to move a little bit. So it might be that you are kind of rounding and coming back upright, rounding and coming back upright. This can be, I'm exaggerating, so this can be really subtle. It can just be that slight engagement. It is better always, I think, if you can get up and actually move. So as I often talk about, the legs are such a profound part of the abdomen that if we can move the legs, while we are holding on to this trouble spot and we can move around and actually let the whole torso respond to the movement that's happening through our whole body as we are maintaining engagement of our hand here that really is best this is where things tend to calm down the fastest so as i'm doing this i'm just noticing my hand is already able to sink deeper as i'm moving around i'm getting more movement through my guts uh, through the muscles, through the fatty tissue on top of my belly, and that's all from the movement itself paired with this engagement of the hand. Yeah? Okay, so that's what we do if, and then of course, even if you're sitting in that meeting at work, you can be very subtle about it, but I do want you to, as always, just give it some soothing love after you've done this. Oftentimes that will be enough to really calm down what's going on. You might have to do it a couple of times, walk around for a little bit, but it's super effective that way. The other way to, uh, the second way to do this is say that you know that you tend to flare from right under this left rib. So then even if you weren't feeling discomfort here, uh, like symptomatically you weren't feeling discomfort here, oftentimes that engagement will show you like, oh, there is something going on there. You do your engagement, you do your walking around, start moving around. You know, if you have to sit in your chair for this, that's fine. But again, this movement of the whole body, the movement of the legs as we're doing this is super important. It's really, really important to engage as much of your body as you can. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm waiting for the body to open up. I'm not demanding that the body open up. Soothe it when it's done. And oftentimes you'll come back to where it's hurting if it was hurting in a different spot than your quote unquote usual spot, 
and you'll notice like, wow, that's starting to feel different. Very good information to have, right? Okay, so that's the technique for today. And it's very simply engaging with, you pick the spot in your body, um, hopefully based on your own knowledge that you already have about where you tend your, your flares or bowel obstructions tend to start, but also you can just follow wherever it happens to be today in any part of the belly. So here down in the hip bones, things like that. Um, if it's low pelvis area, that's fine too. You can just engage. Oftentimes you'll need um, both hands and then again, just walk around. So this can apply to almost anywhere. A lot of people will show up, we've talked about before, how the, the posterior pelvic floor, uh, AKA the butt, <laughs> is often part of pelvic pain, is often part of abdominal pain. So you can do this pressing into your butt muscles as well and walking around, getting that movement. So it's as simple as that. This is a beautiful technique that I find helps people over and over again. The quote unquote trick, of course, being that you have to catch it right at the beginning. So the minute you start wondering, is something going on here? Um, the minute you start feeling that fear, like, oh my gosh, that dread of, oh no, another one is starting. Um, that's the minute to take a deep breath, feel into where you're feeling it in your belly, pelvic area, hips, butt, engage, and then move around. Okay, I hope this is helpful. As always, let me know of questions. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you next time.